Hi guys, so today I'm going to go through the simultaneous equations, one linear and one non-linear. So first things first is, I suppose, recognizing which is the linear. And a linear is a straight line graph. And a uh, non-linear can be a quadratic graph or anything with a square. So if it's a quadratic graph, it can look like this. So sometimes we can have two answers as our answer, or we could just have something like this if... Um, if the graph just meets it at one point, all right? Uh, but important to note that we could have two answers here or one answer. Uh, okay, so step one, uh, step one is always the same. Okay, so take the easier equation. And in this case, it is x minus 2y equals 6. Step two is write it in terms of x or y. So I say x or y because there's x's and y's in this question. If there was a's or b's, c's or d's, whatever the case would be, you'd be writing it in terms of that. So what does write in terms of x or y? It means I want x on one side, everything else on the other, or I want y on one side, everything else on the other. So generally when you see these, one will be a little bit easier. And so it's probably a bit easier to have x on one side. So if I have x on one side, that means I need to get rid of the 2y. So I get rid of a minus 2y with a plus 2y. They cancel and I'm left with x equals 6 plus 2y. Okay, so step one, take the user equation and write it in terms of x or y. That's step two. All right. Okay, step three is substitute your answer into the harder equation or the nonlinear one. But if you have a look at this, obviously this one up here is the harder equation. Let's write it in blue. It is x squared minus y squared equals 15. And I'm going to substitute this answer. So the answer I got in step two in. So I'm saying here that x is equal to 6 plus 2y. So it would be 6 plus 2y to be squared minus y squared equals 15. Okay, so at this point, guys, I am going to have to do a little bit of working out. So I'd hope you'd recognize that um, 6 plus 2y squared is actually 6 plus 2y by 6 plus 2y. So I'm going to go away now and I'm going to work this out. So I like to do this by box multiplication. So top and side. So I have a 6 on top and I have a 2y. And on the bottom, I have a 6 and a plus 2y. You can write your signs there. Just make sure you don't go wrong. So 6 multiplied by 6 is 36. 6 multiplied by 2y is 12y. 2y by 6 is 12y again. And 2y by 2y is 4y squared. So I'm going to write all of that down. And I'm going to write it this time in green. So I have 36 plus 12y squared, sorry, plus 12y, plus 12y, plus 4y squared. Remember, that was me working out this part here. So I have to still add in the rest of the sum. So the rest of the sum is this bit here, which is minus y squared equals 15. So can I do a little bit of tidying up? I can. 12y and 12y is 24y. 4y squared minus 1y squared is 3y squared. So um, I always like to write the highest power first. So 3y squared plus 24. And then I have, let's bring minus 15 across. So it'll be 36 minus 15. And I am getting 21. So plus 21 equals zero. So the next step, step four, is always to make this equal zero. And you can see I just did that there. Okay, so this is a quadratic, but uh, generally we can make them a little bit easier by ourselves by multi or sorry by dividing across by something. So I can see here that everything, all of these three, twenty four, and twenty one, is a multiple of three. So I'm going to divide everything by three because remember in maths, once you do it to everything, it's totally fine. So if I divide this by three y, I'm going to get y or sorry by three, I'm going to get y squared plus three eighths or twenty four y plus three sevens. Okay, and now you can see here we have a quadratic. So quadratic, guys, we are going to look at the focus on the factors of seven. So there's only one as it's a prime number. Okay, and those factors, what way can I get eight y out of them? Well, it's obviously um, I can have y's back to back and I can have a plus seven and a plus one. So to just show you that how that happens, seven by y gives me seven y and seven by one gives me one y and if I add them together I get eight y. So I'm going to delete that bit now. 
because that's just showing the checking. And so this is the new bit now is that you solve here. So you take your two brackets or in some cases you might only have some one thing in bracket if it's taken out what's common and you let your brackets equal zero. So y plus seven equals zero. Y is equal to that's minus seven on both sides. Y is equal to minus seven. And then y plus 1, so this bracket equals 0, and y is equal to minus 1. So now you've got two y's, you've got two answers, and what you're going to do is you're going to substitute it in to this here, to the sec step 2. So step 2 was x equals 6 plus 2y. That's what we had decided. So now, if y is minus 7, I'd get an answer. And if y was equal to minus 1, I'd get another answer. So let's see what those answers would be. So x, it'd be equal to 6 plus 2 times minus 7. x equals 6 minus 14. x equals 6 minus 14 is minus 8. And then x equals 6 plus 2 times minus 1 here, because I'm obviously letting y equal minus 1. x equals 6 minus 2 x equals 4. So then we write our answers and we always do them in brackets and we always do the x value first and then the y. So if x was minus 8 then y would be minus 7 and if x was 4 y would be minus 1. And that's it there. Okay so that's all we need to do for today. So it's just really about stopping this going back and forth seeing where I got everything obviously hopefully I didn't make a mistake but um that's generally how you do these so a lot of the time we're going to end up with quadratics here so just remember quadratics look back on your video going over them if you forget uh, there's a new step here where you let your two answers equal zero you get two answers and then you sub them in back into step two so I'll write that here sub back into step two. All right, fifth years, I will see you tomorrow.